Hi guys, this is Rich with Wild Wonderful Weekends, and I wanted to make a quick video today to show you how you can capture this time-lapse effect in the sky while the rest of your videos are playing normally using your Insta360. Let's take a look. Okay, to set up for this shot, there are a few things that you need to consider. One is that you don't want your camera in direct sunlight for very long because it can overheat. Another is that you want enough clouds in the sky to where it's going to be kind of dramatic when, when the hyperlapse happens and they're moving kind of fast. Um, but the wind doesn't have to be moving very hard. Those clouds are going to be drifting by anyway. And if you're shooting with treetops or something that's going to blow in the wind, you definitely don't want a lot of wind. The more wind, the, the worse it's going to be because it's going to be really hard to mask out the sky in post to get the trees to look like they're still. In fact, in that intro clip, if you look, you can actually see these trees are moving up there in the background. So it wasn't the most perfect day to shoot that because there was a lot of wind at that time. Uh, another thing that you want to consider is uh, how, how long you set your camera up for the time lapse. So we're really going to shoot two videos. We're going to shoot a video at regular speed. That's the one that we're going to be in making our motion towards the sky or some, doing something that's going to trigger the sky basically to start moving fast. Uh, in other YouTube videos I've seen where people kind of jump and hit the ground dramatically. I didn't do that for the intro. I just kind of pointed at the sky. But whatever your subject is, they'll want to make some action that looks like it's causing the sky to move fast. And so we're going to shoot that in regular uh, video. You could even try it in HDR. It's probably going to work better in HDR, actually, uh, because the way it takes pictures later, it kind of shoots those in HDR sometimes, or at least it enhances them even if you aren't shooting in HDR mode. And then we're going to shoot a second clip, and that's going to actually be in hyperlapse. So to set the camera up for the regular video clip, it looks like this. Tap the camera setting display at the bottom of the screen, then slide to select video or HDR video. Look at the top of the screen to make sure you're shooting in 360 degree mode because when it's time to shoot the hyperlapse video, that option will only be available in 360 degree mode. The display at the bottom of the screen now shows I'm shooting at 5.7K at 30 frames per second. Now you can record your subject in the frame doing some action that will make it look like it causes the sky to start moving fast. Next we set the camera to shoot in hyperlapse. Tap the camera settings at the bottom of the screen again. Slide to select hyperlapse. For settings we want to match the frame rate we shot with the regular video. So 30 is selected here. We're shooting in 360 degree mode so the resolution is 5.7K again. And for capturing clouds I like to use an interval of 4 seconds. You can experiment with this of course. Now we're ready to shoot our hyperlapse clip. To calculate how long to record video in order to get enough hyperlapse footage, take the number of seconds of hyperlapse footage you want, multiply it by the frame rate of the video, in this case 30 frames per second, times the picture interval, in this case 4 seconds, and then divide by 60 to give us the recording duration in minutes. So for this short clip, let's say I want 10 seconds of hyperlapse footage. I'm going to multiply that by 30 frames per second, times the picture interval of 4 seconds, and that gives me the duration to record in seconds, but then I divide it by 60 to let me know how many minutes I need to record. So now I can just hit record on the Insta360 and watch my clock. Once we capture that, we're ready to move it into the computer and our editing software and fix everything up. The first thing we'll do is open the Insta360 Studio app and load our video files. Two previews show up on my list. The first is the clip I shot at regular speed, and the second is the time-lapse clip. I'm going to select the regular speed clip first, and trim it down to the section I want to work with. Next, I'll set up the framing and the view the way I want. So I drop a keyframe at the beginning. I don't want the field of view to be so wide, so I click the natural view icon. Then adjust my left and right orientation to about negative eight. And I want a bit more sky in the shot, since that's where the action will be taking place, so I adjust the setting to 14. Now I'll preview it real quick before rendering the reframed video. And you want to make sure your subject is below the skyline, by the way, like I am here. If your subject breaks the skyline, it'll make masking more complex later. Okay, that looks good. Now let's export this clip. Make sure that the export reframed video is selected at the top and that the destination path is correct. If we were sending this video clip straight to a social media site like YouTube, you could leave the bitrate relatively low, but since we're exporting for more editing, I crank that bitrate up. I also make sure that I'm exporting to 4K. And I will use the ProRes file selection. If you don't want to work with large files like ProRes, 
you can use H.264 in the U.S. Now we just click Start Export and wait for that to complete. Once that clip is exported, I'll select the time lapse clip and preview it. Now we'll want to apply the same framing and view settings on this clip as we used in the regular time clip. So I add a keyframe at the beginning of the clip. I choose the natural view option again. Then I set the left right setting to about negative eight. I set the up down setting to 14. And now I'm ready to export this clip using the same settings I used for the regular time clip. With both Insta360 clips reframed and exported, let's launch DaVinci Resolve. There are several software options for doing sky replacement, but DaVinci Resolve is super powerful and you can do this in the free version. There are lots of tutorials on YouTube for DaVinci Resolve, so I won't cover the basics here. The first thing we'll do is drag our reframed clips into the media pool. Then in the Edit tab, we'll drag down our regular time clip to the timeline. We'll play the clip up to the point where we want to splice in the time lapse clip. Then select the Blade tool and make a cut at the scrubber location. Now we can drag the time lapse clip above the regular time clip, putting the start of the clip right against that scrubber. Advance the scrubber to the end of the regular time clip, and use the blade tool once more to trim any excess from the time lapse clip so that both clips end at the same time. Now select both clips that are stacked on top of each other, then right click and choose the new fusion clip option. Now we open the fusion tab, and there are our nodes. I'm just gonna select them all and move them toward the center of the work area. The two nodes at the far left are our video clips. If I select the top node and press the number one key on the keyboard, that clip will display in the leftmost display. And it looks like that one is my regular time clip. I recognize the way the sky looks from when I previewed the clips earlier. So now I'm gonna press the number two button on my keyboard to have that clip display in the rightmost screen. Then I select the bottom node and press the number one key to have it display on the left. I'm going to go ahead and rename these nodes so that I can easily tell them apart. This is my time lapse clip. And this is my regular clip. And I'm going to separate them a bit. Notice that my regular clip is connected to the merge node by this yellow line, which means it's the background. But we want the regular clip to be the foreground, so I'm going to click these nodes at the input points and just pull them away to break the link. Now I'm going to click and drag the output of my regular clip to the green input on the merge node which makes it the foreground. I'll do the same thing on the time lapse clip but connect it to the yellow input node making it the background. Great, now I select the regular node then press shift plus spacebar to bring up the tool selection panel. From here I type Luma into the search field then select Luma keyer. Right now the regular clip is displayed in the right pane, but if I select the Luma keyer node, I can press the number two to display it in the rightmost pane. Now you see a semi-translucent mask is displayed. On the right of the screen, there are tools that we can use to adjust our mask so that we only have the sky selected. The main slider is the luminance slider and we'll use that to select the bright parts of the video that we want to mask. Notice as I slide the slider, the opposite of what I want is happening. Instead of the sky being masked, everything else is being masked. But that's okay, we just go down to the bottom of the tool set and check the box labeled Invert. And right away we see that it's starting to look better. Now I can adjust the luminance slider to get as much of the sky masked as possible. Now I'm going to advance the scrubber to where I'm in the shot too to make sure the mask isn't affecting me. And sure enough, you can see here that my hat is masked a little, as well as the grass in the shot. That's an easy fix though. We're just gonna draw a mask border around the sky. I zoom out of my clip so I can move my cursor outside of the bounds of the display. Then I select the polygon tool and start clicking to add a border around my sky. 
I don't have to be overly careful here because there was no masking in the trees. But I do want to include the parts of the trees where the sky is peeking through. Basically, all we're doing here is telling the software to only use the luminance masking inside the border of the polygon that we're drawing. I close the polygon and immediately we see that the mask is no longer on my hat or the grass. Cool, so now I select the Luma keyer node again and now it's time to fine tune it. I adjust the luminance slider until I have as much of the sky masked as possible. Then I come down to the blur slider and adjust it till I'm happy with the edges of the mask. This is easier done with buildings than trees, but that's what we're working with here, so it'll be fine. Now I can use the contract and expand slider to make the mask more deep or shallow. And finally, I can adjust the gamma slider to further refine my mask. You may have to play with the sliders a little to get your mask the way you want for your video clip, but take your time and you will get it. When I'm ready to preview how the mask will look, I can go back to the Edit tab and play the clip. One thing I like to do is to add a cross dissolve transition at the cut line, that way the sky doesn't just jump into time lapse speed but instead kind of eases into it. My computer isn't very powerful so when it hits the fusion clip it grinds to a crawl. One way to mitigate that is to go to the playback menu and select quarter under Timeline Proxy Resolution. It's still pretty slow on my old Mac, but I can see that the effect is working and it looks pretty good. I can pause the video and advance the scrubber one frame at a time by using the arrow keys. This gives me another option to see if the effect is shaping up right. And since I'm pretty happy with the way things are looking, I'm going to go ahead and compile this video. I go to the Delivery tab, name the output file, Choose the destination location. Make sure it's exporting in 4K with a frame rate of 29.97. Add it to the render queue and render it. My timing is a little off in the final shot, but it isn't bad for a quick walkthrough. If you take your time and plan this shot well, you can get some really neat dramatic results. The main thing is to be creative and just have fun. Thanks for watching and if you enjoy these videos please like and subscribe. Take care.